The DC analysis for the push-pull amplifier is a little bit easier than some of the other ones. And the big reason for this is that the goal right off the bat, the goal at the beginning is to get the transistors biased and cut off. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this point right here and this point right here to be equal to zero volts. And you're doing that by putting 0 0.7 volts on the base with a diode over here. You've got a little bit of trickle current coming down here. This point sits at 0 0.7 and therefore the output sits at about zero, and you naturally end up with a Q point down here. So your biasing point is to try and get 10 volts across the transistor, 10 volts across the transistor, and close to zero milliamps through it. But you need a little bit of emitter current in order to avoid crossover distortion. You don't want them to both be completely off when you start, because then you have to go up a little bit before you get any output. So you have these dead spots that I talked about in the previous video. And how this works is that you set the emitter current by something called current mirroring. And this is in the text on page 389 and page 654. Uh, and by current mirroring, essentially what current mirroring says is that if you get a little bit of a current coming down here, by current mirroring, you'll get the same current coming down this path here. So if you set this up to down to two milliamps, you should get two milliamps coming down here. How you would calculate the value for this current would be, well, I would take the, the two supply voltages and subtract the diode voltages. So I would say two times VCC minus 1.4 volts. And then I would divide that by the, the RBs here, which are usually the same resistors. Well, they have to be the same resistors because the idea is to get this point to be zero volts. And you can't do that if, unless they're the same. So this is how you would figure out the emitter current, which is equal to the current going through these diodes. And then that's how you would calculate that. I'm going to show you current mirroring in a second, but I just want to point out one quick thing before I do that. You notice here that I'm applying my input voltage to this push-pull amplifier, that I don't have a capacitor on the input, and I also don't have one on the output. And this can be done in, the, in this push-pull amp because basically I'm supplying it with a split supply, plus 10, minus 10. The normal point in the middle here, the normal voltage of these two points is zero volts. And because Vn is centered around zero, and this is zero, there's no difference in DC voltage that I need to block. So I don't need any capacitors. The same with the output. The load normally we want zero volts across it. And this point normally sits at zero volts. So I can direct connect the load to the output of the amplifier. Now, current mirroring. Let's talk about that. So the basic idea behind current mirroring is that if you have current coming down uh, through a resistor here and you're going into two parallel diodes, current mirroring is based on the idea that if you have a circuit like this, then the current would split equally between these two diodes and they would each get the same current. That is, of course, is, uh, has a few caveats on that, that the diodes are the same type of diode, uh, and they just you pull them out of the bag one after another, and so they have the same characteristics. And by same characteristics, I mean that they will have the same voltage across them with the same current through them. So if this is 5 milliamps here, uh, if 2.5 milliamps goes this way, it's like 0.7 volts, and if 2.5 milliamps goes the other way, it's 0.7, then they will split the current equally, they will share it. So what happens though, so let's say the current that goes into one diode, let's say the current for some reason comes and starts going over to the right here. If more current for some reason is diverted into this diode, then what's going to happen is the voltage across this diode is going to go up. More current means more voltage. Remember the basic diode curve. So basically the basic diode curve looks something like this. At 0.7 volts, if the voltage goes up, then the current goes up. So if the voltage, if the current down this path increases, then the voltage also increases. And all of a sudden, this side is 0.75, and this side is sitting at 0.7. And all of a sudden, this is the path of least resistance. And so the current starts shifting back towards this side. So if it rises, if it, too much current goes this way, the voltage goes up and then the current 
goes back the other way. So it naturally, if the diodes have the same characteristics, they naturally share the current. And what we're doing in, in when we talk about the push pull amplifier is we would say this is the bias. This is the bias diode here. We would put this diode down here. We got current going down here. And then through the transistor, since I've got these two diodes in parallel, the current down this path would match it. So it doesn't split it, it matches it because the transistor can amplify the current going through it. So basically the current, the transistor turns on enough to push enough current through this diode so that the voltage across it is the same as this diode. And current mirroring is something that works pretty good in integrated circuits but not so good in discrete circuits where you're using separate diodes and separate transistors. So usually when I come down and give you a problem uh, with a push-pull amplifier, usually I'll give you what R' prime is because I recognize that this current mirroring doesn't really work that well when you're building circuits uh, with discrete parts. And so I just give you R' prime and then from that you do your AC analysis.